Why do we feel isolated? Therefore, today, you and I, I want us to establish his word upon his earth. Let's say it together, we are establishing his word upon this earth in Jesus' name. You may take our seats. When you begin to think, you know, the plan of the enemy is to make people feel unwanted, to make people feel, you know, unrecognized, and unworthy, and admired. That's a lie from the devil. Amen? The Bible says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. The curse that may lie into our spirits. Being made a curse for us. How was Jesus Christ made a curse for us? He was nailed on the cross. Amen? For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree. Now, here are some of the things that I want you to understand and begin walk with them during this time of thanksgiving. You'll be victorious. Christ has redeemed us from the spirit of poverty. Amen? Poverty doesn't mean that you have too much money. It's the freedom that you have in the spirit. It's the joy that you have in understanding the goodness of God. Christ has redeemed us from sickness. Christ has redeemed us from spiritual death. We were one time dead whilst we are alive, but God redeemed us from there. For poverty, Christ gave, gave us wealth. Our lives are written in the book of life. Amen. For death, Christ has given us eternal life. So now I know if I was to die today, I will live forevermore. There'll be no more death. Amen. For the word of God is forever settled in heaven. We must establish that word of God upon our lives. Amen. So today, I want to encourage each and every one of us, fight back against the spirit of rejection. How do you fight it? Just begin to declare who you are as a child of God. The, hard, the hardest battles we fight can be the ones we wage against ourselves. That's the, that is the most difficult battle because that battle, you fight it in, in the privacy of your home, in the privacy of your bedroom, in, in the privacy of your vehicle, in the privacy of your office. That's when the enemy lies. When the enemy comes to twist you, that's the hardest battle. It is time to take our own inner critics and say, I declare war to the hidden struggles. Who is your worst critic? It's us. I'm my worst critic of myself. Sometimes I find myself failing to sleep. Why? Because I'm criticizing myself on things that are not true. You are your worst critic negative thoughts and anxieties that keep you from becoming who God cre created you to be. So it's time we fight back against the spirit of rejection. Because the spirit of rejection, it will rob you your freedom, your independence. It will rob you your great victories. And it will hinder you to begin to manifest the presence of God inside your life. During this time of thanksgiving, even the food will not be enjoyable because the enemy is robbing you of that. Amen? Here are some of the dynamics of rejection. The closer a person is to you, the deeper their rejection can wound you. And sometimes we think, oh my God, these people in the church, nobody loves you. These people in the family, nobody loves me. These people at work, nobody loves me. The enemy, the devil, is a liar. 
How many believe the devil is a liar? What does the devil want you to do? The devil wants to prove to you that you are worthless. But I want, I got a good news today. You are somebody. You are, you are worth everything the world can never offer. You are created in the image of God. The best inside you is just blossoming. It's falling down like honey. And when God looks at you, he sees nothing but the best. Look at yourself on your dreams and they say, the best is yet to come. Because I'm the best that God created. Amen. Now here's what the devil does. The devil will try to lie to you. To say, do you know everybody disapproves you? You know, he has lied to me. And I believe he has lied to you. But fight back. That's what I'm saying. Today, fight back. I am not owning to this. Fight the voice that you are hearing. Because God, when he comes, he doesn't condemn you. God, when he comes to you, he tells you how wonderful, how gracious, how powerful, how anointed. See the goodness of God inside you. And they thank God for who you are. You know, rejection sometimes causes us to think the authority figures are also able to affect you deeply. I don't think there's anybody who loves me. I don't see anybody care, caring for me among the authority. I've worked for some of the mega churches here in the United States, especially when we used to live in, you know, Florida. I always wondered, do my senior pastor love me? Do the bold love me? And one day I walked over there just to be told, he says, this is your office here. And I'm, I was given this beautiful place where I was working from. And I began to say, what was all that that was telling me? Nobody cares. That's the spirit of rejection. The devil is here to what? To steal, kill, and what? Destroy. The devil is the chief divider. He can divide the best of all the friends and completely destroy them. You better get to the point where, you know, even you don't feel it. Because sometimes, you know, I've never walked... You know, whereby you say, man, I, I feel the love. Yeah, it's sometimes you may feel. But just begin to say, I'm loved. I'm the best that there is. And there's nothing that can happen without me. Because I'm the best that there is. You know, put yourself on the pedestal where the devil is trying to bring you out of the pedestal. Amen. <coughs> Are we together? Parents often pass rejections on their children when they say things such as, I'll love you when you get good grades. How many times have we heard our parents say those words? That's a lie. Say these words, I'm far from oppression. Fear does not come near me. That's what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 54 verse 13. I'm very far away from oppression. Oppression is not my portion. Oppression is a lie from the devil. Amen? <coughs> very important questions to ask ourselves. The question is, are you looking to anybody for your approval? Can anybody give you the approval? No. Nobody can give you the approval because people, they don't know what you're going through. Who can give you the approval is Jesus. Can you rise up and say, he has approved me. And at the very moment when you start identifying the approval from God, the very moment the blessings begin to flow through your life. You begin to see the divine favor coming on you. Are you basing on your identity on what people think of you? It doesn't matter what people think of you. They were not in the secret plan of creating you. You are created beautiful and wonderful by the hand of the almighty God. And when God created you, he created you so unique. That's why when you rise up in the morning, see yourself 
There's no one who is like me. That's why I do things that nobody can do. Amen. See yourself accomplishing tasks that nobody can accomplish. See yourself do things that nobody has ever dreamed. See yourself blessed beyond imagined. And believe me, people that start looking at you says, how did this one come to this level of accomplishing this? It's because you, you are proved yourself through the eyes of Jesus Christ. And the, that's what I'm trying to bring. Because there are a lot of people this time that are going to be so miserable. Some of the people that are going to be at the verge probably of depression, suicidal thoughts, and all kinds of nonsense that comes from the pit of hell. You know, I don't have a techie. I don't have anyone. I don't have this and that. I don't. That is just nothing but the lie of the devil. What you have, praise God. And say to yourself, I can do all things through Christ who does what? Do we have people here who knows the word of God? I can do all things through Christ who does what? How many are strengthened by God? Amen. How many are strengthened by God? Amen. You know, you better just reach to the point whereby you worship. You magnify the name of God and see how much God is strengthening you. You know, does your approval give your life a meaning to a meaningful pursuit to, to, to anything that you want to accomplish in this world? Am I pursuing something that is worthwhile? Am I pursuing breakthrough? Am I pursuing victory? What is God doing in my life? Amen? And when you begin to realize what God is trying to do through you, you are going to see major breakthrough. Amen? If we know we are in Christ Jesus, it will be an entirely different story. The reason why we go through rejection is because we doubt the level of breakthrough that Jesus had upon the face of the earth when he came and destroyed the powers of the enemy. You know, we would seek to identify ourselves through the word of God. That's why the Bible says, study the word, study the Bible to show yourself what? Approved. A wake man that needs not to be what? Ashamed. Doing what? Rightly divine the word of God. And when we begin to identify ourselves like that, Yes, nobody is going to attack us. We are going to be immune, providing that, you know, we are basing our identity on who Jesus Christ is. You know, whatever other people they think about you is not necessary. What God thinks about you is necessary. Amen? What the Lord thinks about you is real necessary, and that's what makes you different. Amen? What makes you different is, what does Jesus, have you ever, do you wake up, if I ask a question here, how many wake up with a scripture that you have put in your life and throughout the whole this year, that's the scripture that you have best, no matter what you're doing, no matter where you are, you know, when you think of that scripture, no mountain, no valleys, no mountain are too high for you to climb. No valleys are too low to go through. No days is too hot for you to cross over. No place is too dry for you to dig a borehole for water. Have you found that scripture that makes you a unique person? Find that scripture that describes you. And don't just go in the scripture and point around the verses and say, this is my scripture. Ask God, God, I want you to speak to me through the word. And then put it on your bed. Put it when you rise up. Put it in your vehicle. Put it in wherever you are going. You're going to your office. Look at that scripture. You're driving, coming to, that, to this church here. Look at that scripture. You do find out even the people that you meet in the highways, byways, in the malls, in the market. They are going to wonder who, what kind of a person are we meeting? It's because God you have made a connection with God through the word of God. You know the Bible says, my people, they perish for the lack of knowledge. 
You see, these days, people, they study the Bible to make a theological argument, not to nourish the Word of God. Amen? People, they go and they study the Bible. It says, oh, I'm going to make a theological argument. We have uh, people like Ravi Zakaria, if you want theological argument, sit down with them. They'll help you to understand the truth. They are projectics. They call them apologetics. But if you're a child of God, you're hungering for God, find out what is it that inspires my spirit? What is it that causes me to be unique? What is it that changes my life completely? What is it that when I read or hear, nothing can put me down? Lift your head unto the hills from whence your help come from. Rejoice. Don't walk in misery. You know, there are a number of times, most of the people, you never know what they are going through. But when you see them smiling, when you see them praising God, when you see them laughing, and you will never even realize to say, these people, what is this person going through? But the joy of the Lord has become their what? Strength. It's in joy where we see signs and wonders. It's in joy where we see miracles. It's in joy where we see breakthrough. It's in joy where we see deliverance. It's in joy where we understand that God has a plan for our lives. Amen? Get your identity from God's word. Get your identity from who? If we get our identity from God's word, nobody will define you. And that's the problem that we have. Everyone defines us, but not the word of God. You know, the devil would want to define us, and they put us down, trash us, and they mock us. But let you put the word of God, believe me, they can drop you in the desert. You still rise up and say, I'm victorious in Jesus' name. People don't not understand. That's why Elijah was able to go into the wilderness and they cry up to God. And the God was able to feed him with the hot cake every day. And the raven bed brought by, the, by a dead bed, it was able to deliver food to this man because he knew who he was and he identified himself with the word of God. He said, I may be in the desert, I may be in the only prophet that have remained. And the God said to Elijah, there are still thousands of them that have never bowed to bow. Yeah. Amen? So now when you know who you are, you discover that there are other people that are going through what you're going through. And then God has made you to be victorious. The Bible says these words, there have never been any temptation that have taken you by surprise which is not common to any other temptation. For in each and every temptation that you go through, God provides a way out for you. They, there's a way how you can escape. And it's only through God. Amen? Now, when we do, we become virtually immune from the devastating and hateful effects of rejection. You know, the enemy, what he wants us is for us you know, to be, you know, whenever you feel you are rejected, you know who is affected is your inner being. Now, here's what the Bible says But my spirit will not strive with men. Once your inner being is struggling, is hating, you know what happens there? You lose your joy, you lose your sleep, you lose your functionality, you lose the purpose that God created you because you are burdened. You, know ye not that you are the temple of God. And whosoever defiles the temple of God, God shall defile him. And this is the reason why God wants us to be victorious. It's because he wants his spirit, his presence to operate in us. I want to let you know some of the things like rejection brings stress. Stress brings depression. Depression begins to bring wrong thoughts like suicide. And in the long run, you open yourself to all kinds of calamities and diseases. And why has these things come upon your life? It's because you have opened these things and the enemy starts vexing you. And as the devil is vexing you, you get yourself into the position whereby 
You can't function. When you can't function, you can't have a vision of what God wants you to be in life. You must know every human being that God created, he created us with a purpose and he created us with a vision and that vision cannot be pursued by anybody else. We are the only people who can pursue that vision. And as we pursue that vision, we fulfill the reason why God created us to be upon the face of the earth. Now, the reason why we cannot do that is because we allow some junk inside us. So today, I encourage you to say to yourself, I am throwing out everything that doesn't belong to God. I'm a new creature. I'm a child of God. I have the freedom. Great is he that is inside me. Who is inside you? If God is inside you, you better take your moment and rejoice and put the devil to shame where he belongs because the devil is nothing but what? A liar in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you, how many believe the devil is a liar? The devil is a liar. <clears throat> That's why when the devil speaks, he will speak to convince you. But when God speaks, he gives you the decision. Because God gave us to be a free moral agent. He gave us, it's your choice. Choose what you want to be. Choose who you are. Choose what you think can work for you. But the devil, when he speaks, he literally convinces us. And we cannot come out of that. God promises are never to leave you or to forsake you. Amen? Let's say these words together. God's promises for me are never to leave me or to forsake me. So when our identity is based upon what he says of us, we can be assured that we are not going to face rejection coming from him. So here's the most important thing. That means rejection doesn't come from God. Rejection comes from who? From the devil. So the devil now is there trying to twist us. He's going to do everything to break you. That's why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave you, nor what? He said that he will never leave you, nor what? So, what exactly does God's word tell us about who we are in Christ? I'm going to bring these things today so that you understand. I want you to understand this because this is going to catapult you in 2020. Do you know... <laughs> When you find the number, if you, those who have been studying the number, 20 stands for redemption. May you go in the year 2020 as a year whereby God is redeeming you from all the shame, from all the humiliation, from all the embarrassment. Go in that chair and be victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Let God give you the victory. So what does God's word say about who we are in Christ? I believe I'm preaching to a group of people here who are all born again. Who are you in Christ? Not who are we in Buffalo. Not who are we in Depew. Not who are we in Erie County. Because all this is just nothing. But who are we in Christ Jesus? That's one thing that we need to find who are we. When you begin to identify the location, you limit yourself. Stop limiting yourself. Put yourself around the globe as an ambassador of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> My good God. Because of God's great love of us, we are adopted in his family. Amen. Amen? That's who we are in Christ. We are adopted where? Adopted. We are adopted in his family. That means no matter, no weapon that is formed against me will prosper because I am 
the Son of God, and then when it comes upon me, it will be blunt. When it comes upon you, it will be blunt. We are adopted in who? In Christ. We are made joint heirs with Christ. Do you understand what the Bible says? We are made what? Look at your body. Look at your leg, your every ligament inside you. All the ligaments, they function according to the purpose they were created because they are jointed with one another. My hand cannot do anything. It works with my head, my head, it works with my eyes, my eyes works with my ears, my legs, everything. It's functioning according to the purpose that God. Now, here's what God is saying. We are joint heirs. Not disconnected heirs. We are what? Joint heirs with Christ. Now, see yourself as a child of God. I'm more valuable. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. God made me victorious because I'm joint heir. That means when the devil comes and advances to attack you, if the devil can attack and defeat Christ, then you are, you are doomed. But if the devil cannot defeat Christ, that means there's nothing that the devil can do to you. Amen? Amen? Listen to this part here. If you're writing the scriptures, you, you know, you can get that one from 1 John chapter 3 verse 1. But I want you to understand something. We are made to sit in heaven places with Christ. We are seated with him. Where? In the heavenly places with Jesus Christ. So no matter where you are, when people, they see you, that's why people, they don't understand who you are. They don't comprehend it. They don't get what is happening with you because you are seated with Jesus Christ. Where are you seated with him? Where are you seated with him? So now, here's what we are saying. For our weapons are mighty to the pulling down of all strongholds. Amen. Then the Bible tells us, for we do not wrestle against what? Fresh and blood. Why are we not wrestling against fresh and blood? Because our weapons are supernatural eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. For those things that are in the heaven places, when they see us, they bow down. They know how great our God is. And because you cannot touch what is in the heavenlies. We are seated with Jesus. Where Jesus is seated, we are with him. We need to begin to see ourselves how important we are in the kingdom of God. And when we begin to value ourselves, believe me, things are bow in Jesus' name. Sometimes I wake up, I wonder, because some of the people that I connect with in the world, there's no way how I can connect. I was just thinking about it the other day. And I said, Lord, how did I connect with them? He says, because your father in heaven knows them. Before you were born, he saw them. Now what he did, he connected you to the righteous will of God. And there comes the blessing. I'm telling you, when we understand who we are in Christ Jesus, things that will be coming upon our lives, they will amaze you. You can write a book that can never be finished because you have identified your seat in the heaven places. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you have authority over all demons and the forces of darkness, all oh sickness, that's why when an evil spirit comes near by you, it has to bow in the name of Jesus. Don't accuse and lie and slander God. Why me, God? Say, God is there for you. He wants to see you exercising the authority that he blessed you. That is what God did. He made us to be free moral agents with the right to choose. We choose what we think is good to us. Now, the devil never made us free moral agents. That's why when the devil attacks us, 
He makes sure that he finishes you there and there. But God, you know, it's your choice that you made this morning to come to the church. God never forced you. You knew where you needed to be. And the way you needed to be, that's where you are now. And the God now is downloading just like the computer. He is uploading something inside you to cause you to be never the same again. Tell somebody, this is my day. Amen. Amen. Now he goes on where he tells us, we are blessed with the spiritual blessings in Christ. We are blessed with what? Spiritual blessings in what? Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 tells us we are blessed with the spiritual blessings. We are blessed. There's nothing that can change us. We are blessed when God sees us. He sees you. He doesn't look you as suffering. He doesn't look you as stranded. He doesn't look at you as struggling. He looks you. You are blessed with spiritual blessings in who? In Christ. Your blessings doesn't. That's why when you try the things of this world, it fails. But when you try with God, it just pours on you. It showers you from the head to the toe. Oh, glory to God. Tell somebody I'm blessed with spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. How many believe you're blessed with spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus? Hallelujah. Come on, let's make the devil jealous here. Hallelujah. We are blessed with the spirit of blessings and the devil cannot shut the blessings of God. Amen? The devil cannot shut, you know. Now how many times the devil would have desired to harm you, to do evil, but he, he is afraid. You know why he is afraid? Because you are blessed with the spirit of blessings. You know, we are the righteous of Christ through faith. Amen? See yourself. By faith, I'm the right. You know, people that says, what kind of life do you live? Righteous. I'm walking in the righteousness of God. By faith. Amen. You know, we pastored in Nashville, and uh, there was this young lady. Every day, when, wherever I met her, how are you doing, sister? I'm, ble I'm blessed and highly favored. And I was looking, I said, man, I don't see the blessings. <laughs> you know, every day she says, I'm blessed and highly favor. Every day she said, I'm blessed and highly favor. One day she came and she surprised everybody. And when she began to explain how God had downloaded that scripture more than 15 years ago, and she walked every day, I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you, sister? I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you, sister? I'm blessed and highly favored. And one day, you know, we just found out that she had opened a mega company. And in that company, she had hired hundreds and hundreds of employees. Where did it come? From the confession by faith. We are what we confess. Now, someone may say, we are what we confess. Yes, if we are confessing, you know, I'm isolated. Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. That's the devil doesn't know you. The devil only uses what he hears from you. Amen? The devil is not omnipresent. The devil is not omnipotent. Omnipresent is not everywhere. He's not all-powerful. He's not all-knowing. But here's what the devil is going to do. He's going to use what you speak. You are the weapon. You are the weapon that harms itself. You got a weapon... Instead of shooting at the devil, you're shooting at yourself. By the words of your mouth, you incinerate yourself. You trap yourself. That's why be careful what you say. What you say is what you become. The Bible says the power of death and the life lies underneath the what? Tongue. You confess something, you say something, you know that thing begins to be in your life. And why? It's because that's what you're speaking. And the, the Bible says, whatever you say, it shall go and accomplish, and it shall not retain void. I think this morning we ought to confess and repent some of the words that we have spoken. Amen? 
When I say something, it will not return to me void. It's going to go out there. It's going to accomplish the mission that I have spoken to. Words are life. Amen. If I speak something, that's life there. And the, the following moment when you find yourself you are trapped, don't say, I don't know why the devil hates you. Sometimes even the devil says, I don't even know what you're accusing me. Because I didn't do nothing. You spoke the word. God is not a son of man that can lie nor repent what he has said. If he has said something, if it's in the Bible there, it shall be. According to the book of Numbers, God will never lie. God will never repent. Now God says, the words that we speak, when we release them, they go to accomplish something. They will not return back to us void. That's why we need in our own life to speak things that are edifying, that are glorifying, that are life-changing. See your life transformed, changed. And when people, they look at you, they said, I really don't understand why this person every day when I'm thinking is going down, is just going up and up and up and up. Why? It's because you're speaking life. You speak victory. You're speaking supernatural blessings. Amen? Your word brings glory. Huh. We are the righteousness of Christ through faith. That's been made right before God. We are entitled to a clean conscience before God because of the blood and the can have full assurance of faith when we go before him. Look Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. We are entitled to a clean conscience. Say these words with me today. God, cleanse my conscience. I have no spirit of rejection. I was chosen before the foundation of the earth. I'm blessed beyond measure. Oh, how, how many believe you are chosen before the foundation of the earth? Why do you let the devil identify you who didn't know you before the foundation of the earth? The devil never even knew that you came from the mouth of God. All the devil knew is when he saw you born in your mother's womb. You are already in the plan of the sovereign God before your birth. So you're being upon the face of the earth. You are fulfilling what God purposed whilst you are in the heavenlies from the mouth of God. For me to be here today, it didn't, it's not a happenstance or a coincidence. Before my father and mother knew each other, God saw me preaching in Buffalo. And that was in Africa. God saw me. What am I doing here in Buffalo? I am in the will of God. And I will take over Buffalo for Jesus. How many believe with me that we are taking over for Jesus this place here? Somebody praise the Lord here. You better speak it. Because if we don't speak it, the enemy will steal it from us. So speak it so that it goes to accomplish. Amen? Speak the word. When you speak the word, it goes to accomplish. And what it goes to accomplish, there will be victory. Begin to walk into it, you know. <coughs> the Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So what are you supposed to do? One leg, be willing. The other leg, Obedient. The other leg, willing. The other leg, obedient. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the what? The good of the land. Believe me, how many of us are eating the good of the land? We are not willing. We are not obedient. We are not satisfied with the goodness of God. But the Bible says, I chose you before the foundation of the earth. Before I press you in your mother's womb, I had you written in the palm of my hand. I placed you to be above all and not beneath. I chose you to be high above. I want to let you know, saints, today, let's come out of the shell that has been bounding us. 
Let's come out of the shackles that arrested our feet. Come on, surrender everything to the will of God. Call yourself, I'm chosen. No weapon comes upon me. What God says is mine is mine. It shall never be changed because it was separated, sanctified, anointed for the purpose of me. You are the right recipient. You better get what God has for you because if you don't get it, nobody else will get it. There are things that God separated for you your will. You better thank God that this is your day. This is your time. This is your hour. Change your mind. Change your thinking. Change your understanding. With all understanding, get understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. With all understanding, get what? Understanding. I pray this way that today you are eating it. Digest it because this word is making me to be victorious. Eat it, walk with it. Be separated to the world. Don't see the traumas that are ahead of you. Don't see how groom it is because tomorrow the sun will shine. In the midst of darkness, there arises the sun. When you see the six in the evening, there's darkness. You mustn't think it will remain dark. Because as the time is ticking, it's ticking to your blessing. It's keeping on going. Oh, I wish somebody can bless the Lord. <coughs> Our sins have been removed as far as the east is from the west. Amen. You better tell yourself. My sins have been removed. It's the devil, he's trying to accuse me with the sins. I'm not a part of that. They may come, but believe me, therefore now there's no more condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Amen? My sins, there's no accusations of your sins because your sins have been broken. Hallelujah. God set you free. Whom the Son of God set free is free indeed. God himself has chosen not to remember our failures. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12. You know, the things, my failures, God doesn't remember them. And he has chosen, you know, we have a laundry list of our failures. That's why I don't remind people of their failures because that's not them. Where do you get that preacher? I say open Hebrews chapter 8 there. You'll find it. Verse 12. Put it, Johnny Mark. Hebrews 8 there. See how God have chosen to forget everything. See it. God has chosen. Amen. God has chosen not to remember your failures. You better tell somebody. Can you put it all the whole thing? I'll forgive their wickedness and I'll remember their sins no more, no more, no more, no more, no more, no more. The devil is a liar to remind you of your yesterday. You are set free by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He, there is no sin that is holding you. You are the Victorious. Hallelujah. Man, I, I feel the presence of God in here. <laughs> Amen. There's one verse in Psalms that really puts the light on how we can be freed from devastating effects of rejection. When my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Oh, hallelujah. Say it with me. When my mother my father forsake me. What happens? The Lord will take me up. Woo Say it one more time with me. When my mother, my father forsake me, who will take you up? 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 How many believe the Lord has taken you up this morning with victory? Hallelujah. He has taken us up. We are victorious. 
Oh my good of God. I'm just so excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can't continue go on, but I sense the anointing of God here. Hallelujah. I sense the freedom. I sense the deliverance. I'm telling you the chains of the enemy are being broken. Watch us, please. The chains of the enemy are being broken. Let me just close this because I'm sensing the presence of God. There are people here, I can hear chains snapping, pow, 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 pow. And you're saying, what is happening? They are snapping. Everyone who laughed at you, tell them, look at me now. Amen. Everybody who doubted you, they are going to see who you are. They are going to see what God is doing through you. You are sitting on the peak of everything. The blessings of the Lord overflows you, follows you, overtakes you, and it's all over every side, everywhere where you turn. They are the blessings of the Lord. But you just don't know how to tap into what God has put into your life. Walk around and spread your arms. You can never touch what God has put inside you. There is victory all over you. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. The name of the Lord shall be forever the same. God, he looks at you and he marvels at you. Do you know what it makes God to smile? God smiles when he sees you victorious. God smiles when he sees you having breakthrough. Breakthrough, you begin to have the breakthrough because before you see the breakthrough. Sometimes we are waiting, I'm waiting for the breakthrough. But God is saying, now is your time for the breakthrough. Start rejoicing. You take the tape, the bold tape of rejoicing in your breakthrough. You know the children of Israel, when God told them, I'm going to give you the land that belongs to you, there was a condition. All those who died, who doubted, they remained in the wilderness. And God asked them, he says, but why did you doubt? I'm not the son of man that can lie. And God told them, he says, I'm going to take you to the promised land. And when you reach over there, I want you to go round the walls of Jericho. And you know they were walking through the walls of Jericho. People they were busy laughing at them, mocking at them. Not knowing that God, every time when they are walking, God was putting dynamites. Was putting explosives. I want to let you know you better walk in your faith. The Bible says those who are willing and obedient, they shall eat the good of the land. God is destroying your enemies. I'm not saying God came down from the heaven to put explosives, but their earth was shaking. And they walked over there on the 13th day. You know, the last day they walked seven times around those walls and that amounted to 13 days. And I believe me, when they reached there, they shouted the walls tumbled down. They came tumbling down. Why? Because the children of Israel, they said, we are obeying what God has told us to do. I wonder how many of us today, they are walking around the walls of Jericho to your victory. And the people they are looking at you, they say, what are you doing? Tell the devil, I have been chosen before the foundation of the earth. My God God put me in victorious position. What is mine is mine. I'm blessed above measure. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm the head, not the tail. I love to say that all the time. I'm above only not beneath. Oh, glory to God. My God is doing something that no man can comprehend. You can't touch what God has put inside me because I have been chosen before Oh, my mother's womb. I wish somebody can praise the Lord. Your time has come for your victory. Today is your victorious day in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 You know, as they sing this song today, 
God put upon my heart that I want each and every one there are spells that has been assigned into your life that has bound you sometimes the devil ties our mind where we cannot have the freedom sometimes the devil ties our legs we can't move to our victory but today as a servant of God I come to declare that you are free in Jesus name I come to declare that a victory is yours I come to declare that it's all well in Jesus name I come to declare that you have overcome in Jesus name I come to declare that you are covered by the precious lamb of by the precious blood of the lamb the son of God Jesus Christ I'm declaring every chain every accusation every slander every lie that has been spoken about you is broken in the name of Jesus right now it's over enough is enough the devil is a liar he has no power over your life be free whom the son of God set free is free indeed today is the day of your freedom in Jesus name I wish somebody can praise the Lord this is your hour for your breakthrough don't look backwards this is your day to go further, not to stand still. Somebody worship the Lord because this hour, victory is yours. In this Thanksgiving, you will never be the same again. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Let's sing it. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord the cup of faith. I'm chosen, not forsaken. I am who he says I am. I'm chosen, not forsaken. I am who he says I am. on anybody but if you just want God to do something through you as they are going to be just singing softly here just come in front here I strongly feel that just come and say what you want 
and your word will go and accomplish. Whatever you speak today, it will go and be accomplished. Have faith in Christ Jesus. Have faith in Christ Jesus. Just come on. Anyone that wants to come, speak what you want to say today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just have the freedom right now in the name of Jesus. You just want to say whatever you want. Just speak it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just have the freedom. Say it right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Lord, he's here. Sense worship. I was lost, but he brought worship me him. in all his love for me. Oh, his love. 